Welcome to Oak Chapel United Methodist Church. I know you're not here, but we're here together in spirit. And thanks to the internet and other forms of digital technology, we are able to share a message with you today, even though we cannot be together in a physical sense because of the current pandemic. By the way, Oak Chapel is located on the western edge of Worcester on West Old Lincoln Way. And we're kind of obscured from the highway because of several buildings, but you can also see us and access us from Route 250 West. As we gather here today, we welcome you. We hope you can spend this short time together with us. And if by chance you are looking for a church, we would welcome you here at any time. Our services, when they resume, are 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Sunday school begins at 9.30. And we're hopeful, like the rest of the faith community and uh, the nation and world at large, that we will soon be back in business in that sense. But for now, let us open with a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, as we sit in our homes, separated, even isolated from others, we are comforted by your presence. Nothing in the universe can separate us from you and your love. Yet we are troubled by the uncertainty of the current pandemic. Just one of the many things that burdens us at this time. So we ask you today not only to be with us, but also to lift us up, to watch over us, to bring us comfort, and to bring us peace. This we pray. In your most holy name, amen. Are you okay? I know I should have asked that question a long time ago, right? When I came here to Oak Chapel in July of this past year, I've been wanting to ask that question to know how you are doing, but I never got around to asking. And so today, I want to ask that on several levels. How are you doing? How are you feeling? We're all a little unsettled right now, right? A little concerned, maybe a lot concerned about the current pandemic. How is it going to affect us in a physical sense? What does that mean for us moving forward with our finances? What's going to happen next? It's one of those junctures in life when we really cannot answer the question. We simply don't know. But when you think about it, we really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or even later today. And so we exist and actually thrive on our faith, taking one step, putting one foot in front of the other to guide us and direct us. But I do think it's important that you know that we care about how you are doing. You know, that's kind of a phrase that we just sort of throw out there. We pass each other in the store or even here at church. How you doing? Good. How about you? Oh, not too bad. And that's the end of it. And when we think about it, we really don't listen for and maybe don't even care a whole lot about what the response is, right? But today, and especially given the circumstances that we are in, I thought it was important for us to ask the question, but also to affirm that we do, in fact, care about you and about how you are feeling. So today, as we struggle through this difficult time, we want to be sure that we are reaching out to you. In Christ's love, taking a look, looking after you in terms of your needs, the things that we might help you with, the concerns, the burdens, the anxieties, the things that you might be struggling with. That's what we want to affirm with you today. When you think about it in our relationship with the Lord, he probably asks us that same question as well. Every day when we rise from bed, he says, how are you doing? How are things going? You okay? Everything all right? We don't hear that physical voice necessarily, but we know that he has that care and concern for us. And so we can share that care and concern with one another. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've got enough burdens of my own. I'm not going to get involved in other people's business. Um, I do sort of care about others, but I just don't have the time to get involved in their situation, in their problems. And there is something to be said for that. It's understandable. However, as disciples of Christ, we are called upon 
to reach out to others in love. And so today, I want to suggest to you that we contemplate a little bit how our brothers and sisters in and outside of the church are doing. I want to share a little scripture with you this morning from the New Testament book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let us listen for the word of God. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. I think that's a neat little package for us to live by, especially in these difficult times. Now, one of the concepts that is really difficult for most people, not all, is that of humility. We live in a society in which we are trying to better ourselves, to get ahead of others, to be number one, to be on top. Humility doesn't really have a role in that. But in the life that we live for Christ, in the life that we live for others, humility is front and center. So I invite you to think a little bit today when you ask the question, how are you doing? How are others doing? Think a little bit about humility. And I will tell you this, that when you do inquire about the burdens of others, this kind of strange thing happens, but your burdens are not quite as bad as maybe you thought they were. Perhaps they're even lifted from you. So it's important for us as believers to think about others, even to put others first. Now, where would we get an example of someone who put others first? Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In this Lenten season, as we reflect upon the passion, the crucifixion, the resurrection, what better example of someone who put not just others, but everyone else first, to the point of an agonizing death on the cross? Why do it? What's the use? These people don't care. They're not appreciative. And you know what? They're probably going to go on sinning anyway. That is the ultimate in being humble. That is the ultimate in sacrifice, the ultimate in putting others ahead of us. We're not being asked to take it to that limit. But we are being asked to consider the lives of others especially in these difficult times. So the next time you take the time to ask someone how they are doing, be sure that you listen for the answer and perhaps think about a way that you can reach out to them and lift them up and help them. Doesn't mean you have to take all of their burdens on your shoulders, but you might be able to ease them of one burden. And wouldn't that be helpful to them? And there is a gift that comes with that. The passage we just read talks about the crown that you will one day be given. But even in this life, you will be rewarded by the good feelings of reaching out and lifting up someone else in an unselfish-like gesture. These are the things that we can think about, not only in this Lenten season, but throughout the entire year to ask about others, to be concerned about their welfare. Now, I will say this. This church has a marvelous tradition 
of living up to that call, to being genuinely interested and concerned about one another. So even though you're not here today in a physical sense, I do feel, as the old saying goes, that I'm preaching to the choir because you already do what is being asked of you. So where do we take it from there? Well, two things. Number one, we can continue to do that. We can continue to reach out in love to one another, to really even sacrifice a little bit and help lift the burden from someone else. But there's another byproduct of this that will really pay an additional dividend. When others see you do that, they may just follow your example. Just as we try to be Christ-like in our lives, and although we fall woefully short, we are, in a sense, following Christ and trying to be like Him when we do things such as this. When others see that and it multiplies and grows, imagine how much better our world would be. I'm not saying that we can necessarily wipe out all conflict, all war, all violence, all hunger, all suffering. But I am suggesting that we can do a much better job than we're already doing. So let's take some time today, tomorrow, next week, throughout the Lenten season, and maybe, maybe even for the rest of our lives, to ask people, how are you doing? And most importantly, to listen for the answer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we cannot deny it. We are unsettled, even fearful, worried about our health, our loved ones, our jobs, our very way of life. Be with us in this time of trouble. Deliver us from the darkness. Help us to reach out to others, to show the concern for others that you have shown to us, to ask the question, how are you doing? To listen for the answer and to respond appropriately. And now as a fellowship of believers, as we contemplate the current state of affairs and acknowledge that the world isn't in a real good place right now, that we take this time to lift up others, those who have been affected by the virus, as well as those who have been affected by many, many other sorts of illness and afflictions. We lift them up as we lift you up right now, because certainly there's something that perhaps troubles you, a source of pain for you. We lift up and pray for you as well. Let us lift up these burdens, these anxieties, at this time. But let us not forget the many blessings that God has given to us. And let us be thankful for those as well as we pause for a moment of prayer. Lord God, you are the great comforter, the great healer. We ask you to be with us to reach out and bring that comfort and peace to those who are suffering today. We also give you great thanks for your presence in our lives. Help us to recognize our blessings, to count them one by one, and to give you thanks and praise for all that you do for us as you guide us on the pathway of righteousness. And now as a fellowship of believers, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples and they in turn passed along to us as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We thank you once again for taking time to be with us here today. We hope that through God's word you have been enlightened, inspired, and encouraged. And that you'll take time today, somewhere along the way, to ask someone how they are doing and how you might help in their journey. And now as we go forth from this place, 
let us do so with great inspiration and great encouragement. Let us step out boldly in our faith to lift up His name and to do His will. This we pray in His most holy name. Amen.